Sir, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank honorable members, both from left, right, and center. I think this is a very rare occasion that. <laughs> this is a very rare occasion that you find that the whole entire house is unanimous on a particular subject and it is heartening to know that no, 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 you cancel. You only requested to cancel it. No, sir. No, that can no, no, Tarunji. I allowed you. Eight minutes. No, no, no. Now it is over. Adhyaksh Mahadev, you can do one thing. Presence of a karu. You can tell me what I want to tell you. I want to say one thing. Tarun, no, no, Tarun. See, how can it be? One suggestion for Uttarakhand. How can it be? Because I just want to request Honorable Minister that this is a very good bill. But kindly extend these facilities to some other states also. As I had seen the list, sir, in northeast except Assam, Meghalaya, and Tripura, not a single other state has got even a mental hospital. You have a small hospital in Renawari in Srinagar, but nothing in Kargil or Leh in Ladakh area. Nothing. This is my information okay. till today. So right. these are the. And secondly, sir. That's okay. That's secondly. Please provide facility no, no, to no. those who are accompanying such uh, patients for hospitals in railways and in okay. air journeys. And third, okay, why did you call your name? Why did you call your name? Why did you call your name? Why did you Why did you withdraw your name? Yeah. You, I allowed that you withdrew your name. Okay, sir. Please. I would like to not only thank the honorable members but also congratulate honorable members for showing a very keen interest in the subject and this is the subject which is which needs the attention not only of the government but the entire nation and particularly the attention of the parliament because there are a number of areas which have been neglected and which were neglected for over a period of time and uh, I am very happy that for the last few years we are trying our best to overcome all those impediments and difficulties which were coming in the way of, of taking new initiatives. So like this initiative, the most uh, talked about internationally, globally is the issue of uh, uh, NCDs, non-communicable diseases. So India is the first to start the screening, of course, as a pilot project, screening of individuals, both for hypertension, diabetes, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases. And this is my firm belief and the policy of the government that in this five-year plan, we would like to screen the entire country for non-communicable diseases. So similarly, this is an, another area which was neglected so far, neglected in the sense that it was not the core issue, it was not the area where the government could have or should have given thrust. And this is the first time that we have taken up this major step. As I have said in the beginning that uh, Nimhans is the largest neuropsychiatric center in the South Asia having bed strength of 852 and to give further impetus to the National Institute of Medical Health and Neurosciences so that it can take new courses in emerging areas of mental health and neurosciences such as geriatric, psychiatry, autism, spectrum disorders. This is another area which is totally uh, neglected so far and I would like to congratulate the Prime Minister of Bangladesh and the UPA Chairperson Srimati Sonia Gandhi who for the first time organized a conference of these neighboring countries at uh, Dhaka and now we are going to organize the conference, similar conference in our country in New Delhi and maybe this must be for the first time that this particular uh, autism spectrum disorder has been uh, brought into the focus in this region. I have been attending other conferences across the globe. I didn't find any word about this particular disease in any forum. So maybe this particular region has been neglected. 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 Ma
will be uh, the region taking lead in this. Autism is again the young children born, they have some uh, a disorder. I, in, in one part of the, uh, they may be very intelligent, but they may not be able to take decision. They may be able to take decision, but they may not be intelligent. So some disorder is there. So this is also is going to be the part of our future program. And epilepsy. Again, we don't have much about this so far. The, then movement disorders in neuro rehabilitation. It is necessary to provide the institute greater administrative and academic autonomy for which it needs to be declared as a institute of national importance. Then it would be able to develop new patterns of teaching and devise new courses and constantly evolve new slave and take up new courses that are not currently part of the Medical uh, Council of India approved courses. With the passing of the above bill, along with the, its amendment, it will be possible to make the institute a statutory body corporate and declare it as an institution of national importance under the entry 64 of list 1 of the 7th schedule of the constitution so that uh, it may develop as high level an institution of the mental health and neurosciences on the pattern of All India uh, Medical, uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, PGI Chandigarh and Jipmer Pondicherry. Sir, I would like to mention that uh, Nimhans uh, already has a deemed university status having infrastructure and we have land of about 135 acres. We are now proposing the construction is almost going on for the last two, three years. As a matter of fact, um, in this coming Saturday, I am going to inaugurate another block almost every sixth month or seventh uh, month we are inaugurating or laying the foundation stones for new blocks. So it's an ongoing, uh, uh, you know, uh, process. We are going to have also a helipad. To have 135 acre of land in Bangalore city is not a small thing. So we have uh, the land available for infrastructure, for critical patients. If somebody is to be transported from airport to uh, uh, this institute, we would like to have helipad also. Sir, uh, honorable members have given large number of suggestions. So if I deal with all the suggestions, it is going to take a lot of time and uh, we have another business and the house is going uh, to be only up to 5 o'clock. My submission to honorable members will be that I will be mentioning only just 5 or 10 most important which have been raised by almost everybody but for rest of the uh, question raised by honorable members I would assure them that I will take the record of the house and within fortnight I will reply to all their queries which they have made but at the moment I would like to take the questions which have generally been <coughs> raised by uh, all the members of the parliament. <coughs> Sir, it has been mentioned about dharamshalas. So we had two dharamshalas, one for uh, 250 and one 200, and one was inaugurated by me only about three to four months back. There has been a men <coughs> mention there is acute shortage of uh, human resource. Well, almost every second honourable member of the parliament said that this institute should not be confined to only one corner of the country. There should be so many institutes, may not be of the same magnitude, may be of a smaller size in different parts of the country. Sir, at the moment, the problem with the government of India, the health ministry, as a country, is not only in the area of mental health, but in the health in general. We have acute, while we have... I, for the last seven, eight years we are implementing an RHM. But the only way, stumbling block in, our, uh, in implementing all those facilities which we wanted to provide under National Rural Health Mission is the acute shortage of human resource. Similarly, should we like to have many more institutes of smaller size or bigger size, the problem is acute shortage of the human resource. We have at the moment, uh, insofar as 
psychiatrists are concerned, we have requirement is 11,500, but availability is only 3,800. So there is 67 percent shortage of psychiatrists in the country. Clinical psychologist, the availability is 898, whereas the requirement is 1700 to 150. So there is 94% shortage. Then psychiatric social workers, the shortage is 96%, and psychiatric nurses, the shortage is 50%. You can imagine the shortage uh, which we have here. And this also makes my point much stronger that why should we have an institute of national importance because any institute at the moment is guided by the rules and regulation of Medical Council of India. They cannot increase the faculty, the, no sir, they cannot increase the number, they cannot put their own syllabus. But once this institute is an institute of national importance, autonomous institute, they will have all these, uh, you know, the facilities and uh, a freedom to develop their own syllabi and also increase the human resource. Knowing that, that uh, the disease burden or this uh, mental health burden is quite unexpected. Not many people know. It is in crores. So I think that in future, one of our items in agenda would be that we would like to know as how many mentally ill health person we have in the country. So keeping that in mind, we shall have to have more centers in the country. As one of the honorable member said that uh, while my discussion with him in the last session was that it will be my earnest desire to have many more institutes in other parts of the country. But at the moment, we have a planning only for, we have at the moment a central institute of psychiatry at Ranchi. So we would upgrade it immediately and also we have drawn the program and there's another uh, institute that is Lokmanya Gopina uh, Bardali Regional Institute in Tejpur. So we have already almost made and uh, we have approved 26 crore for the upgradation of this institute. And these institutes, both Ranchi and Tejpur, they will also produce human resource uh, in future. And similarly, Notwithstanding these are uh, two institutes also, but we will also identify some regional medical colleges, maybe a few dozen of them, where we shall have to upgrade and give them some money from government of India and some training. Of course, some doctors from the rest part of the country, they go to uh, Nimhans for training and get back to their respective states as one of the suggestions had come that the doctors should be trained and then they go, should go back to their respective states. But going back to their respective states without any facility and without any proper institute is not possible. We shall have to select some uh, medical colleges across the country, maybe in each region where in we can provide some money from the government of India and those, uh, the, those uh, doctors from those particular institutes, they can go to Nimhans and uh, get training and that can be uh, publicized across the country where the uh, countrymen shall have to approach. There's been also mention about the money. Sir, we are giving uh, uh, full attention to upgrade this institute. You can say that in 2004, the government of India, the total amount of money was given uh, 26 crore under plan and 20 crore non-plan, whereas this year it is 109 crore uh, plan and 80 crore non-plan. So you can imagine 
the progressively the money is being increased. Preservation, I think this is another area which has been mentioned by everybody. Sir, at the outset I would like, there is no question, there has been apprehension that uh, what will happen to the present staff? What will happen to the pattern of reservation? Sir, the reservation pattern of reservation is, is already there as in the rest part of the government organization. So existing arrangement will continue. We are only, nothing is going to change. Nobody is going to be changed. Right from PN to the director, everybody is same. Only we are giving it a institute of national importance. So reservation will continue as it is there. The staff pattern will continue. Pay involvements will continue like that. There, there has been also mentioned that the president should not be the chairman. We have accepted the recommendation of the standing committee. But we have also not outrightly said that he may or he may not be. We have sir, just... Uh, yes, yes, sir. The general apprehension is that when an institution is elevated to the status of national importance, the reservation status goes. So no, no. Kindly, we want you... No, 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 it's not going. It will, it will be the same. It will be... Uh, no, no, no change in the policy. No, in the policy, the reservation will continue. Nothing is going to change. It's very clear. Very, uh, very uh, clear I am about. The president... Of course, it has own advantages and it has own disadvantages because president is just to preside over mostly uh, sometime, uh, uh, you know, the convocation. Otherwise, it is the director who is the chief executive officer who sits there. The president doesn't there. But then we have the disadvantages are there. If you have a health minister other than, you have your president other than the health minister, then you have to give him a bungalow, you have to give him a car, you have to give him a house. So it is always a burden. I can see at the moment that out of all the institutes, like we have seven or eight, including, uh, you know, uh, AIMS and PGI and some other institutes in the country, the health minister does not know. I don't know who told my honorable friend that the health, the president as health minister takes the, uh, you know, uh, allowance and all this. There's no nothing allowance. He doesn't get anything <coughs> because as long as his health minister, he's uh, paid as a health minister. So he doesn't get any TA, DA or anything else. So, but we have only one example of uh, Jipmir Pondicherry where the health minister is not the president of the institute. So you have to give him the staff, you have to give him the house, you have to give the car, you have to pay for that. So whether is, you want an additional burden, or no burden. And then health minister is the minister of the country. It's not a question of me, A, B, or C. So he knows about the entire supply and demand. And he is also totally unbiased because he doesn't belong to a particular stream, particular. His uh, job is to take the uh, care of the health of the entire country. So I don't think that we should totally, of course, because we have accepted the demand that that will be appointed by the government of India, but I don't think we should make it as a prestige point because it has more pluses rather than, uh, I, you know, minuses. <coughs> Similarly, there was a demand by honorable uh, uh, members uh, that the health minister of uh, uh, Karnataka should also be member. Earlier he was also a member and is also chairman. Whenever the health minister of India is chairman, then the vice chairman is the health minister of Karnataka. So now both health minister of India and health minister of Karnataka are going to be the ex officio members and that will be appointed in, uh, by the government of India. In case health minister of India is appointed as chairman, in that case the automatically the health minister of Karnataka will be made as vice chairman. But also I would also like to mention here there was a mention by honorable members that uh, uh, you know, too many members outside are there and too less doctors. I think that uh, perception is uh, not right. I would like to mention that the clause 5, there are seven persons at home. One should be a non-medical scientist representing the uh, Indian Science Congress. 
So these seven are doctors. Then there are four representatives of medical institutes of Indian universities. So these are again doctors and scientists. That makes the number 11. Then there is a Director General of Health Services, Government of India. He is the senior most bureaucrat, but he is the most senior most doctor also of the country. He is not a nobody, no uh, uh, Director General of Health Services, no IS officer becomes the Director General of Health Services. The senior most doctor, government doctor of India, only he becomes the Director General of the Health Services. So it makes the eight. Then the Vice Chancellor of Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Karnataka. So he is also a scientist and a doctor. And then director of the institute. So no director of the institute can be there unless he is a scientist or a doctor. So this number goes up to 11. And then the rest you have only chief secretary and uh, uh, government of India secretary and health minister of India member and health ministry of the state. They have to be there because they have to oversee the functioning and working. After all, they are giving the money and it is in that meeting, in that meeting where in the members decide and request the central government and state government to give the money. And if they are not there, then who is going to comment uh, whether the money will be given and what is their demand and supply. So I think we have enough number of... Oh yes, we have. We have. That's already in the act. Three is on the same analogy as that of PGI and uh, we have three members, two from Lok Sabha and one from Raj Sabha as rightly said by honourable member they need to represent the entire, the parliament represents the entire country so their representatives have to be there to take the uh, call of the social nature uh, from the entire country. As I said in the beginning that it will be very difficult to deal uh, with each uh, uh, question raised by honourable member but I I have promised that within 15 days I will write to each individual question the initiatives, the, the work which we have already done, if any, and the initiative, if our uh, initiatives which we are going to take, and if any query uh, uh, left unanswered, I will try to write. So with these, uh, yeah, poor people, uh, poor. so uh, poor people, sir. There is already a scheme, existing schemes for BPP, BPL, we are poor, uh, you know, persons and poor people free that will continue. Okay. No, please. Sir, with these words, I, I, I will check up. With these words, I would like to request honorable members to, of the House to ask uh, the bill with suggestions and amendments. Sir, Minister, you just mentioned that 67 percent vacancies are there. Pardon? 67 percent vacancies are there. Yeah. Just mention. Uh, are you taking any kind of uh, special effort to ensure that those vacancies are filled at the earliest? Because these vacancies issues, these illnesses. I didn't say vacancies. I said uh, availability. Availability. Uh, demand, yes, demand. Demand. I didn't say the vacancies in the institute. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I said the demand of the country mm. and the supply. This much is the available and this much is the demand. I didn't say the vacancies in this show. All right. Then therefore, the availability and the demand mismatch substantially. It's a huge, 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 huge. What efforts are you going to undertake to ensure that this gap shortens? Sir, this is what I said that like we have a acute shortage of doctors and specialists in other streams. So in the two years, we have taken a path-breaking initiatives and as a result of which, in medical, in, in uh, undergraduate, I think number in two years has gone increased by more than 30 percent, and in PG the increase has been uh, almost 75 percent to 80 percent. So once this institute becomes an institute of centre excellence, I can assure you as member, I may or may not be as president, but the first thing in this institute because so far we were guided by Medical Council of India. So the Medical Council of India has their own guidelines, their own parameters. Even if you wish and desire to increase, it cannot be done unless you fulfill these uh, criteria and all that. Like All India Medical Institute, it, the MCI is not applicable. So they can go ahead with their own numbers. So similarly, once this is out of the ambit of 
Medical Council of India, I think it will be in a better position uh, to increase the faculty. And as I have said that we shall have to develop many more other, uh, uh, develop other institutes, like I said, mentioned Tejpur and Ranchi, which also can produce human resources. Okay.